to my channel, I'm Nikki and I'm your wedding DIY guru and I'm going to be teaching you how to address your envelopes using a Cricut. I did this for my own wedding and while it took a long time and it was definitely a labor of love, I was like, I'm never doing this again. <laughs> Something that I personally would never charge just because I would have to charge the price of a Cricut because it just takes so much time. Like I said, I am dressing my sister's wedding invitations and helping her out with this and it's just the labor of love that like I would only ever do for close family and friends. But with that said, the steps are very easy. I just recommend you taking it slow and once you get the hang of it, it is just kind of a muscle memory thing and you'll understand what you're doing. But don't be too overwhelmed by all of the steps. I'm gonna walk you through every single step. And if you're from TikTok, thank you so much for following me back over here and getting more information on how to do this. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna head over to canva.com. I highly recommend getting the premium package during your engagement. It's only $13 a month and even if you only do it for a few months, I think that it has been very beneficial as you can see throughout different TikToks and different wedding trends. From there, you're gonna make a canvas about the size of your envelope. Mine was five by seven, for example, and that is just so that we can kind of play with scale and make sure everything looks okay. The main reason why I recommend getting the premium membership is so that you can download any font from the internet. You can go to defont.com, 1001fonts.com, all the different free font websites where you can download all the fonts that you could ever imagine. Keep in mind that the Cricut doesn't fill in the fonts. It just does the outline of the font, so make sure that your fonts are relatively thin. So now that we are in Canva, we're gonna find out a format that we like. We're gonna have the text on the top, we're gonna have the address, and then maybe the zip code at the bottom. Whatever you want to do. This is where I think it's really important to have the premium because then you can download it with the transparent background as well. This method wouldn't work unless you did the premium method. And while Cricut Sign Space has an option where you can type out stuff, I just don't feel like it is the most time efficient way of doing things. I found that it's very complicated and it's really just like takes too many extra steps. So in this case, when your quantities are a lot higher, I just don't recommend doing things that add a ton of extra steps in between. From there, I recommend having an organization system that makes sense to you. For me, it was alphabetical order by last name and I had a folder for all the A's, all the B's and so on and so forth. So from there, I can make sure that, okay, there's three A's in this folder, three A's on my spreadsheet, and then also three A's that I have already printed out. Essentially what we are doing is we are taking what we want the Cricut to write out without the white background. So we want them to write the address. So that's what we are doing in this case. And so by making a PNG with a transparent background, it's making it so that the Cricut knows that this is the only part that I'm writing out and that's what we're gonna do. This is something that I think is a good idea to have delegated out, whether that be to a bridesmaid if you're a bride, or if you have are helping a bride, you have the bride do this part, where they write out all of the addresses, and then they download them, and then put them on a thumb drive for you to start your work in the Cricut design space. With that said, there is a wedding etiquette that you could follow. I have a, an example of it all on the screen, so feel free to screenshot it to use if you need it. And of course, break whatever rules you want. It's your wedding. So now that we are in Cricut Design Space, I'm going to go over to Shapes, and we're going to make our template. This will help us have a more accurate location for our invitations. So I'm going to put in the exact size of my invitation, which is 7.25 by 5.25. All right, we have that rectangle. I like to make it a little bit lighter. So then from there, I'm going to add another shape. All right, and this is gonna be where our address sits. So I'm gonna just kind of play around and see what like looks the best. This is kind of where I want how much of my address like to take up the size of my envelope. So I'm going to center this using the align tool, center both ways, and we are gonna slice it. This is our template and we can delete this one. And now we have our template. From there, we're gonna upload. Let's upload our addresses. From here, I'm just gonna do the normal upload. We're gonna do simple, continue, apply and continue. We're gonna do a cut file. We will change this later. Now that I have these uploaded, I'm like I said, I'm going to do four at a time. So I'm just going to import all four and then add them to my canvas. So now that they're all in my canvas, obviously they're ginormous. I'm just going to size them down to about four. And then that just I know is about the size of my template. And then from there, I'm going to resize however size that I think will look good proportionally to my template. And that's one of the reasons why we have it. Now that we have all of these size the way that we want, we are going to select them all and go over here to cuts and we're gonna make it a draw. We're gonna make click the pin button. We want our Cricut to draw it out. Now we're going to make it. And you know this is correct when all of your address is on the first page and your template is on the second page page. From here, we are going to make our mat a 12 by 24. And then we are going to go to our second mat where our template is. And we're going to click these three dots and we're going to say move object. And then we're going to move it to our long mat. From here, I'm just going to move over all of our addresses. 
and I came up with a template that works for me in the size of my envelopes with the corner of the first one to be one and one. And I'll just center that. And then my second one, I've decided to do one and 12 where the bottom corner is one and 12. And center the next address. I always go a little bit farther down just because if it, it just looks better that way in my opinion. Moving these ones down just so they fit on the map. And my third envelope, the bottom left corner is 118. And I am just making that kind of even. It's really not matters up and down as much as long as you go more downwards. But as far as left and right, you can really tell when things are off center. And the very last one, I'm actually just going to pull it down as far as it lets me, which puts the top left corner at 18 and a half and one. And that's where I will put that. Now we're going to click on our template and click the three dots and we're going to hide selected. From there, we are going to continue. And we will go to make it. I personally just did craft paper because it doesn't really matter what it's writing on because it's not cutting anything out. It just needs to know what it's writing on. We're going to get a Cricut and Cricut mat ready. Like I said, we're going to have a format where we put all of our envelopes every single time. We're not going to ever change it up. And then we are going to use some masking tape to tape it down. I recommend taping the tape to your shirt a few times beforehand just so it's not too sticky because it could rip your envelope. Now we're going to get our Cricut ready. We're going to add our pen into the slot. I highly recommend using gel pen. I've always found that they write better. The ink doesn't sink into the envelopes and I just think it looks nicer. I've used white gel pens from Amazon. That's what I did for my wedding. In this case, I'm using Pentel metallic pens. They come in a two pack. There's a gold and a silver and I got mine from Hobby Lobby but I'll have one linked down below. These fit perfect in the Cricut pen slot and you don't have to do anything you just have to kind of gauge where it how far down it needs to go. If you have a pen that doesn't fit in the Cricut slot like my white pen for my wedding I took a gripper and I took out the white piece in the Cricut and I slid it into the slot and that's just a little hack that you can have so you can use whatever marker pen or whatever you need for your invitations. Last thing you need to keep in mind is to move over your white little sliders so it doesn't run over your ink and potentially smear it. All right, you are ready to start. We are gonna insert our 12 by 24 mat with all of our envelopes on it, making sure that the envelopes are all facing the right way and we're not gonna write anything upside down because it does take some time. From there, we're going to insert it in and it's just going to do its thing. Lastly, once you're all done, you're gonna to wanna to take off your envelopes and you're gonna be very careful. You're gonna peel the mat away from your envelope so that you're not pulling the envelope. You also wanna be very careful to not rip your envelope when you're removing the tape. The last thing is you're probably going to want to do a return address. I recommend doing it on the opposite side where the flap is and also buying a stamp for the return address. It makes it a significantly easier process, especially since it's the back. I hope you enjoyed this DIY and I hope it was informative and helpful and that you could follow along so that you can address your wedding envelopes. If you guys have any questions down below, leave them in the comments and be sure to subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in my next video.